Yeah, I'm gonna pray all I 
Good morning. We're going to Romans. Romans 15. Yeah, we're going to drop down. All right. We then that are strong all the bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Verse 13 says, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in belief, that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. May the Lord have a blessing unto the reading of his word. Give me you, give me you, everything. 
God. God is good all the time. God is good. Amen. It's giving time. It is giving time. Get your love, get your God, your feet off in the hands that you can feel. You may be out there. No matter how you try. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, I do freely give the Lord. Bless this my giving in Jesus' name. All the best off me about this in the view. But again, if I know the body of Christ's name, we, we pray. Amen and thank God. And hand the precious and the voices of heaven. Thank you. 
Come on, brother. Come on, stand down front from the justice. Come on, parade down front as everybody give reverence to God. Amen. And thanks for, amen, servanthood. Amen. For servanthood. Amen. God bless you. I appreciate you. Now, just give one more. Say one more prayer. Don't they look good in that young little body? Amen. God bless you. It is a blessing and privilege to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. I'm going to say this. Rush me today. Rush me. God is good. And all the time. God is good. Before I get into it, just let me touch on this. On yesterday, I ran into a young lady. Maybe you know her from the house now. And she looked at me and she said, I'm going to cancer. She said, I got four more weeks of chemo. Then I got surgery. And I got to come. And I'm not sure. And I'm thinking about it. Why is it called to take this? She gave me her name. And she put me in her back. And I added her to my whole talk to her and her Knowing that. God always works miracles. You never know what somebody see in you. That's why you have to let your light shine. Somebody hurt you. Somebody is hurt. Somebody is going to some rough, rough life stages. We have to let our light shine to be that relief that somebody else needs. It can't always be about me. We have to sit out in anger and upset because you are not the Holy Spirit. It's not about me. It's about being a blessing to somebody else. Somebody's hurting, folks. Somebody's hurting. And we spend too much time trying to get the right one of us. If you go with me to back in chapter 7, verse 2. Thank God for the message the last Sunday. It was awesome. Matthew chapter 7, verse 2. Now, for whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and do it then, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock and the rain descended. 
and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sins of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew, and beat upon that house. And it failed. And great was the fall of it. And then he said, Building upon a strong foundation. Building upon a strong foundation. Look at look at somebody asking them this question. Are you building to last? Are you building to crash? It depends on what you try. You build. Are you building to last? In this, in this, in this text, I want to find a few words. It's building upon a strong foundation. What is the definition of strong? Strong is able to withstand great force of pressure. Able to stand great force of pressure. In what is a foundation? Foundation is part of a structural system that supports and anchors the superstructure of a building and transmit and load directly. Every body of Christ needs to rebuild on a strong foundation. Able to withstand force of pressure. Anchor to withhold the load. It's been Deacon's day. Deacon has to be strong. And the deacon ministry, I don't want to say both, deacon ministry is an extension of the board. Those brethren sitting over there is an extension of the pastor. And needless to say, needless to what people say, this ministry. I didn't see you over here. Thank you. This ministry here, second year, is not a God called ministry. It's a ministry set aside by the pastor for the strengthening of the church. Yet God ordains. Come on, y'all look at me, It's a ministry set aside by the pastor, ordained by God, 
for the strengthening of the body of Christ. Something we have to understand that when God puts his hands in, you have to take your hands off of it. In order to be an effective part of the body of Christ, you got to be strong. You got to be willing and able to stand the force that comes against you. Paul, Paul put it this way. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principality and power. Everything God got, got to go through. Psalms one third, Psalm eleven and verse three says, "If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous? What do we deal with? Every foundation is laid." Has something in the middle of the concrete called rebar. That rebar is a steel bar put in the middle of the concrete to strengthen the foundation. Uh, so, 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 what is the rebar in the church? It's the Holy Ghost. You got to have the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, deep inside of you. You don't see a rebar, do you? You're standing, you're sitting a rebar right now, but you can't see. But the rebar underneath your feet is what's holding this building up. What holds the body of Christ up is the Spirit. Be right. The blessing plan. Come on, everybody talking about they want a blessing plan. Read the Bible. The blessing plan is right there. Plain and easy to see. He came to the end with a parable. He came to the parable, and we know what a parable is, right? A parable is the earth the story with the heavenly meeting. And he began to tell the disciples. He said, Therefore, who's ever hearing, be saying about it. I guess I'm just giving you some blessing. If you hear what I say, I will laugh and give unto a wise man. You're going to notice in the parable. Every one of them got to face the same thing. The wise and the foolish got to face the same thing. You're wise, you're foolish. You're still going to face a storm. You don't care how spiritual you are, no matter how well you can see, no matter how cute you are, no matter how pretty you are, no matter how much money you got, you got to go through a storm. I ain't worried about it. I ain't gonna go through no storm. Keep living. Keep living. While you point your finger and making fun of somebody else, because they didn't make it through the storm, just know yours is coming. And just talking about how somebody else didn't make it, how you know you want them. The wise man, the wise man, the wise man built his house upon a rock. 
strong came, the floods came, the rain came, the wind blew, and it fell. Bring me to the song that said on Christ, the solid rock eyes. All of the ground is sinking. So when you're building on a strong foundation, you can't leave Jesus out. No matter how many hymns you sing, no matter how many prayers you pray, you got to keep your focus on Jesus. Amen. Because Jesus is the rock of our salvation. So when the storm when the rain falls. Yeah, you got to have an umbrella. But anybody here ever been like me when I was young? Amen. There were times I just got out in the rain. Wanted to get wet. Wanted to walk in the rain. Didn't want no umbrella. But now we done got so cute and so pretty. Amen. We got to have an umbrella in the car at all times. Just in case in rain. Amen. But I want to tell you, I do have an umbrella. Amen. That umbrella is the word of God. So when the rain of the Holy Ghost starts to fall, I can walk in the rain of the Spirit of God. Amen. Because on Christ, the solid rock I stand. Man, the wise man, the wise man, amen, took time and built the his house the correct way. It's funny. It's funny how everybody want to be a part of the ministry. Everybody want to be a part of something, but nobody want to take time to build correctly. In order for the body of Christ to move into the divine destiny, God would have it to be. It's going to take some time and some effort to build on a solid foundation. Amen. You can't build on hearsay and nay say. You got to build on what he said. And he said lay aside every weight and the sin that do so easily beset us and run this race with patience. Amen. Sometimes things may not be a sin, but it's a hinder in your life. Amen. If you don't have patience to wait on God, that can become I wait on your spiritual application to move forward in the Lord. If you don't know how to deal with certain situations, now the time is a wait, and you got to lay that weight aside and be like the Sunday school say, cry unto the Lord and say, Lord, hear my cry and hear my supplication. Me. I'm not a counselor. I'm, I'm, I'm not a, a, a builder. I don't know how to build a house. I don't, I don't know nothing about construction. Work a little bit in construction. That would just be a paycheck. But they know what I was doing. I'm just, I'm just doing something. You know, you, you do a little something, something. You know, you get a paycheck and you go on about your business. But, but a, a true cop, a true construction they take time to get the right tool I mean, they make sure when they go home the job they, if they need a hammer they got a hammer they need nails they got nails and they, they recognize sometimes a, a, a hammer and a nail ain't good enough so they gotta have space you know what I'm talking about? And sometimes just a regular hammer is not big enough, so they got to have a sledge. Yeah. Man, they got to have all the right talking tools. About, um, when they get on the job, they ain't got to say, man, I got to go all the way back. Foundation. I ain't got what I need. They got it right there. Mm -hmm. And when they start the job, Church. amen, they work Church. with what they get. Right. Because God, God had equipped them with the knowledge oh, and the oh, tools to, to build the house. What God puts in the church is the right tools to build the house. Come on, somebody. Everybody can't scream no matter. Amen. 
Sledgehammer, hammer, not good in some folks' hands. A stapler, not good in some folks' hands. Some people ain't got no business whatsoever handling no glass. They're too clumsy. They may drop it and break it. Some people ain't got no business trying to hang no door. They may hang it the wrong way. But God equips the church with the right knowledge and the right people in the right place to build. Got any pillars on the deacon board? Amen. And what God do sometimes, you got people called journeymen. Y'all know what a journeyman is? It's somebody learning the job. They're learning how to build. They're learning what to do. They're learning what time to go to work. What time to quit work. Come on, somebody. They're learning how to dress. And then they're learning where to go to buy steel toe shoes. They're learning everything they need to be prepared to do the job God had called them to do. That's the wise man. But then there's the second man. And the Bible called him a foolish man. A foolish man think he can skip, scam, and get by. They think nobody see them with the wrong they do. They throw a rock and hide their hand. Come on. They use cheap labor. They use cheap material. And they don't feel right. And when a storm comes, the house falls because they skipped and didn't do it proper. Amen. The wise went through a storm. The, 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 the foolish went through a storm. And what makes the difference is how they build. What makes the difference is how they put their work together. What makes the difference in the house of God is how we put the house of God together. The Bible said, upon this rock I build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. When God started building his house, he put the proper things in place. He put the proper people in place. Amen. Because when he put the things and the people in place, he preparing a, a table before me. In the presence of man in it. You have to understand when you're building on a strong foundation. You're building to last. You're building, amen, to make sure when the storm came, or when the storm come, you can withstand the rain. You can withstand the rain. I heard a story, of a fable about two trees. One tree had pretty limbs, and every year, that tree just went up higher and higher. Pretty limb hanging out uh, on the left. Pretty limb hanging out on the right. And then there was another tree uh, on the other side of the road. Uh, seemed to be growing very slow. Uh, it wasn't getting no pretty limbs. Uh, and the limb wasn't hanging over the street, but it was growing, but it was growing very slow. Uh, one day the rain came, the storm came. The pretty tree, uh, the wind hit the pretty tree, uh, and the limb broke off. Uh, amen. The wind blew it, and it piled down, and it broke off. Uh, and the tree that broke said to the tree uh, on the other side, said, why you didn't fall uh, when the storm came? Uh, and the tree said, while you were going up, uh, I was going down. Uh, while you were growing limbs, uh, I was growing roots. Uh, it ought to have your way uh, with God. Uh, instead of going up, uh, go down on your knees uh, and say, God, uh, strengthen me where I'm weak. Uh, fill me up where I'm towing down. Uh, God, uh, give me wisdom uh, and give me knowledge. Uh, but in all you're getting, God, uh, give me understanding uh, to understand that uh, it's not about me. Uh, it's not about us. Uh, it's about Jesus Christ uh, and him being crucified. Uh, anybody in here uh, want to go stronger uh, in the Lord? Uh, anybody in here uh, 
won't God to strengthen your knees, strengthen your feet, strengthen your prayer life, strengthen your everything to do God's will. So, 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 two foundations, two houses, two houses, two houses. You can live it. Yeah. One of them couldn't stand the storm. Two buildings. One wide. One foolish. Two foundation. Two foundation. What makes you stand is what you build on. Can I be honest with you? You can't build on hearsay. You can't build on what used to be. What used to be is gone. You can't bring back the past. That's why I call the past. It's gone. You have to be reaching forward toward the mark of the high calling which is in Christ Jesus. What are you building on? What are you standing on? I, I got some, I got some shoes. Brother, y'all relate to this. I got, I got some shoes. Some of them, I put them on ball. When I first put them on, they, they felt good. Brand new shoes, felt good on my feet. Next time I put them on, they hurt my toe. My feet didn't grow. The feet, the shoe didn't change. It's the same shoe. But something is wrong. They didn't hurt last week, but they hurt this week. Something is wrong. My feet didn't grow, but they may be swollen. You want to know why you don't fit in some places? You're swollen. You're swollen with bad attitudes. You're swollen with gossip. You're swollen with hearsay. You hold you, you're, you're swollen with talking about folks. You are never going to go stronger in God as long as you get it with hearsay and gossip. You ain't got to like me, but you sure got to love me. Trust in body of Christ. That three positions in the church are to get along perfectly. Three positions in the church are to get along perfectly. The pastor, the chairman of the deacon board, and the chairman of the trustee. The three of us ought to be able to get along perfectly. May not, may not, may not agree on everything, but we gotta love each other and get along perfectly. Because if we don't get along, the body can't grow. Amen. I can't dislike him, and I can't dislike him. He can't dislike me, and he can't dislike me. If we get that attitude in us that we don't like each other, one of the three of us need to step back and say, God, help me. I can't blame him. I can't blame him. I gotta blame me. We talk about building on a strong foundation. We don't see New Bethel reaching heights. Let's get it together. The time is out. It's over. It's over, y'all. It's over. All this criticism and, and putting each other down. It's over. Time out. It's time to love one another, work together, and move forward with God. Spirit sweep over God. 
I lean on you, and you lean on me. We need each other. We need each other. Amen. That ministry is an extension of the pulpit. If the pastor can't preach, one of you ought to be able to preach. If the pastor can't teach, one of you ought to be able to teach. Ah! And here's the key. Listen to me. If somebody comes to me criticizing any one of them, it's my place to stop it. Not to listen to it. Amen. I may hear it. I may hear it. I can't live on it. Can't dwell on it. Gotta work on it. Listen to it. And it calls me to grow attitudes. We got to work together. You and I need each other. And as this body goes, so goes that body. If there's junk over here, it's going to create junk out there. And if there's junk up here, it's going to create junk over there. And the junk we create, create junk out there. But God is such a good God. When junk is created in the house of God, he knows how to straighten it out. He knows how to straighten it out. I know this ain't the kind of message you expect, but I got to give you what God can do. Build, build on a strong foundation. Amen. Deacon Davis, if you see me stomp, grab me. Hold me up. Hold me up. Watch, watch this. Watch this. This is just a little bit different. Everybody talks about David killing Goliath. Cutting off his head. It stops. But you don't realize after David cut yeah. off Goliath's head, he took Goliath's head and took it to Saul. And show Saul, I have defeated your captain, your warrior. I've taken him down. When we take down the devil, let's show it to the world. Show the world we got victory. But we are working as one. My heartbeat should be your heartbeat. Your heartbeat should be my heartbeat. When I heard you on the earth, when I suffer, you ought to suffer. When I'm up, I'll get you up. You down, I still got to get you up. And as the pastor and as deacon, we should never let them talk. Never. If we got a bright smile on the inside, and meet in the back and get it open. We walk out in love with each other. Am I right or wrong? All right. I tried to go another way. That ain't the way God wanted. We got to be all right. We got to be all right. And I'm going to close. I had somebody come to the house. And slide the glass doors at the back. He walked it off the drive. And I wanted to slide the glass door closed here. And put in the regular. From the outside, child, it looks like good. I mean, it looks like good. So as he got the wall up, I said, "What did he? I wonder what he did with the glass door? He just cut it. He didn't take them out. He just covered them up. So I wanted to put up a storm door 
Oh, you got a screen door. The boy. I have somebody come to hang me on the door. He said, Mr. Houston, I'm sorry. What did you got me from the door? He said, that whole door is a crook. He said, and then he put an interior door for an outside door. And a hanging crooked. He said, the only way I can help you, I got to tear out all that stuff he did. And he said, come on, let me show you something. He, he said, he made it look decent on the outside, but he didn't do nothing on the inside. Nothing on the inside. See, we worry about this. We worry about how good we look. And what a dirty heart. A dirty mind. A crooked hanging door. He charged me, but he did it right. You pay for the mistakes you make. Don't think somebody else don't pay for your mistakes. You gotta pay for it. But it looks good now. Yeah, and, and the bad part about it, the person that I had to do this was somebody I knew. And somebody I trusted. You don't start out right, you ain't gonna be nothing wrong. Man told me, he said, I, I, I got married. He said, I'm so in love with that woman. <clears throat> Finally, one day, I woke up and I looked. I rolled over and looked at him. He said, What have I got nothing to do? This ain't what I thought I had. What he thought was a woman was a man, and he didn't know. <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> he said, "I can't get out of here." You just don't know what you get yourself into. But you got to do it right. And I'm not apologizing for the word. God is good and he's standing to you. Everyone's standing. <clears throat> invitation is given. I don't like saying the door of the church is open but the door of the church is But the invitation is given perhaps as someone here today that outside of the faith need to be saved, need to rededicate their life to Christ. We offer Christ to you. We offer Christ to you. My sister. He will give you great life. Life abundantly. Oh, come. Oh, come. Come to Christ. Be in the shell of death, give me a son.
Oh my brother, we need all the pride. Oh my sister, he will give you a brand new life. Life upon the knee. Oh, come. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. To try. Keep playing, keep playing, keep playing. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Praise God. Amen. We we thank God. Thank God for power. Thank you. I'm gonna say a, just a few words and, and thank God for for, for Coach Wellington. Amen. Thank you for what you did. We gonna present this to you. But I say to you, brothers, you get your lot of You get your lot of You you've been called. Uh, Useless, fruitless, boom shooters, or whatever happens, stay faithful. Stay focused on the higher calling. Because God is the only thing that can make us stay. In order to move to a new level in God, we have to do it together. Amen. So we present to you. Charles Day. Charles Day. 
God is good. Amen. Give them a step to your feet and give them a great big hand. Amen. Amen. All right, you may be seated in the presence of God. Amen. God bless all of you. I ask you for your uh, prayers and your patience. May that God will now. I will announce a date, a time after the, after the revival uh, next week, a week after next after the revival. We're going to do some, we're going to stay some leadership training. Amen. Because there are things that we need to be on the same page on throughout the body of Christ. Amen. So that we can defeat the enemy if we get stuck. God bless you. I haven't been blessed today. And what God has given to you, don't let the enemy take it. He is too good of a God for us to give up now. Come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me that the road would be easy. I don't believe it. He bought me this far to leave me now. Amen. All right, stand in the beginning of the body. <laughs> they could cheat each other, they didn't feed you. <laughs> All right, grab somebody by the hand, hug somebody there, and tell them I love you. And there ain't nothing you can do about it. God bless you, may heaven continue to bless you.